All right, let's let the Clapeyron fun continue. So in problem two, we're told the pure fluids described by the Antoine equation uh, is given here. So that's log base 10 of PSAT with P in bars and temperatures in Kelvin. The density of the liquid at room temperature is 0.656 grams per centimeter cubed. How much heat is required to evaporate one kilogram of that liquid at 25 degrees C? Okay. Cool. So basically what we're going to do is we'll take our Antoine equation, um, and from that we'll calculate uh, enthalpy of vaporization uh, via uh, Clausius clapeyron equation. And then once we have an estimate of the enthalpy of vaporization, um, actually essentially that's it. Because if I'm uh, thinking about the Clausius clapeyron equation, um, if I calculate enthalpy of vaporization from this Antoine equation, that'll give me a... Um, enthalpy of vaporization, a molar enthalpy of vaporization, um, so say joules per mole. Um, and so here we're just given uh, a mass density, grams per centimeter cubed. Um, and then we want to know how much heat's required to evaporate one kilogram. So the basic idea would be that Q would be equal to, you know, N, the number of moles, times the molar enthalpy of vaporization. Uh, but Given the density uh, and mass, we, there's no way that we can uh, determine the number of moles, right? What we actually need is molecular weight, um, but uh, but we're not given the molecular weight. So um, in this problem, then, let's just calculate enthalpy of vaporization and stop at that because we're not given the um, number of moles, or not given the molecular weight. Uh, so again, uh, the, the key here is going to be applying the clausius clapeyron equation um, to the Antoine equation. And then I guess it's just a matter of um, <laughs> how good your calculus skills are, right, for lack of a better word. Okay, but, uh, but let's give it a try. Okay, so from problem one, all right, it's given the problem statement for problem one. We have the D log PSAT D inverse T was equal to negative delta H of vaporization over R. Okay, so the general idea is, is, is I want delta H of vaporization. Um, so, all right, what I want is, is on the right-hand side of this equation. Um, so what I need to do then is I need to uh, be able to evaluate uh, D log PSAT D inverse T, right? I need to differentiate log PSAT with respect to um, inverse T, okay? Um, so let's give it a try, okay? And the I'm going to do a couple of things. So first, I'm going to take my Antoine equation, okay, and I'm going to rewrite it, okay, so we have um, as log base 10, okay, so I'm just going to keep it general. I'm just going to say A minus B uh, divided by T plus C, and let me do a, a big divide by sign, okay. Okay, where A is this 4.00266, B is this 1171.53, and C is negative 48.784. Um, and again, taking notes, the temperature here is in Kelvin, uh, which is good, uh, but pressure is in bars. Okay. So um, there's two things we're going to have to, I'm going to change here. Okay. And let me actually write this as log base 10 to P. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do uh, two tricks. Okay, well, not two tricks, two manipulations. The first, well, first or second, um, is here we have pressure in bar. Okay, I'm going to want to take this and I'm going to convert uh, from bars to pascals. Okay, the reason being is um, units always trip me up. Uh, and so I know that if I were to use SI units throughout this problem, all right, so if I have... Uh, pressure in pascals, which is the SI units of pressure, and then I use temperature in Kelvin, SI units of temperature, um, then the right-hand side will be in SI units, okay? In this case, you know, energy is, you know, energy per mole. This is a molar energy. R has units of, you know, energy per mole Kelvin, right? So this has units of temperature, uh, just as this uh, right-hand side does. Um, and so basically, I want to put my pressure in, in pascals because uh, I'm already using temperature in Kelvin. That way, I can use just R and SI units, and I know I'll have you know H in, in units of joules uh, per mole. Right. So I'm just trying to avoid any sorts of any sort of unit conversion uh, related issues. 
Okay, um, so that's that's going to be you know point one. Uh, point two, if I look at the clausius clapeyron equation, uh, I have a differential of log p sat, so that's log base e. My Antoine equation is log base ten. Okay, so I'm going to want to um, change uh, both of those. Okay, um, so let's do it. All right, which one you tackle first really doesn't matter. Okay, and so let me just put a naughts because um, we may end up defining um, some new constants along the way. Uh, just because I like looking at constants rather than numbers, they're they're um, easier for me. Okay, um, first transformation is let's play with uh, change of base. Okay, so if I want to change base, okay, the expression of interest is log base 10 of PSAT, okay, is equivalent to log base um, E of PSAT. Well, well, hold on, let me see if I get this right. Log base 10 of PSAT, oh, no, I want to write it as log base E of PSAT, what I want to transform to. Log base E of PSAT is equal to log base 10 of PSAT divided by log base 10 of E, all right, where E is my desired base, okay? Cool, okay? Now, log base 10 of E is, is just a number, it's just a constant, okay? Um, but log base E of PSAT, so here's log with my desired base, is equal to log base 10 of PSAT um, divided by log base 10 of my desired base, okay? Um, and then again, log base E of PSAT is equivalent to ln natural log, of PSAT. Okay, so when I do this then, okay, I get that ln of PSAT, okay, will be equal to, okay, it's log base 10 divided by this constant. So log base 10 of PSAT is equal to this. So natural log of PSAT would be equal to A naught divided by log base 10 of E minus b naught divided by log base 10 of e divided by our t plus c naught. Okay, so I'm going to define a new set of constants. Okay, so let's just, you know, update constants for simplicity. And so let's let a1 equal to a naught divided by log base 10 of e. And let's let b1 equal b0 divided by log base 10 of e. Okay, cool. So now let's play with this expression. Log psat is equal to a1 divided, oh, is equal to a1 minus b1 divided by T plus, and then we'd call that C naught. Okay, cool. All right, and so basically, I'm just trying to keep this in you know the same form, um, but you know note that you know how I'm defining these constants has, has been slightly changed. All right, then the last is uh, units of pressure. Um, so we're given pressure in units of bar, and I want to convert that to um, pascals. Okay, so basically, uh, pressure. PSAT in Pascals would be equal to uh, the pressure in bars, okay, uh, times uh, one e to the five, okay, and oops, somebody write as one times ten to the five, okay, and so basically uh, one bar is one times ten to the five Pascals. Okay, so now if I think about um, logs, okay, so log psat then, okay, in Pascals would be equal to log psat in bars times 1 times 10 to the 5. Okay, well if I play with log rules then, okay, I get that log psat in pascals is equal to log psat in bars plus log 1 times 10 to the 5. Okay, cool. 
All right, so this is log. This is log PSAT in bars. So if I want to convert to Pascal's, then I'm going to take you know the left hand side and right hand side essentially and add log uh, one times ten to the five. Okay, so I get log PSAT then. Okay, where now my pressure is in Pascal's would be a one. Um, minus B1 divided by T plus C0 plus log 1 times 10 to the 5. Okay. So then, just grouping log PSAT be equal to A1 plus log 1 times 10 to the 5 minus B1 divided by T plus C0. Okay, so last um, let um, a2 equal to a1 plus log 1 times 10 to the 5. Okay, so if I do that, okay, now I have log psat is equal to a2 minus b1 divided by t plus c0, where uh, temperature is in Kelvin, and PSAT is in units of Pascal. Okay, so now I have SAT units for temperature and pressure, and I have natural log uh, as compared to log base 10 uh, as I desire. Phew! <laughs> um, all right, so uh, let's let's do it. Let's see where we are now. Okay, so let me let me box this in. Okay keeping note that this is in, in SI units. All right, so if you go back to what we're trying to do with this, okay, and let me insert another page, okay, so you can take this to completion, okay, is our Clapeyron equation is whoop, D log PSAT D inverse T is equal to negative delta H vaporization over R. Okay, and so what I'm trying to do is I'm going to evaluate this left hand side using my Antoine equation. Because um, once I can do that um, and I want delta H vaporization, well, then that's just right. Well, the right hand side is just equal to the left hand side, which I'll evaluate from, uh, from my Antoine expression. All right. So now the last trick I might pull out of my hat uh, is, you know, copying the Clapeyron equation from problem one. Um, I need to differentiate with respect to inverse T. Um, and I could do that. T is just one over inverse T, but that seems a little odd. Um, so it'd be great if I could uh, transform uh, my independent variable from being inverse T uh, to just T. Um, I could do that. Um, just need to remember a, a little calculus. Okay. So remember that differential of 1 over t is equal to um, what? So if I think about quotient rule, was it v u prime, um, u prime being 0, minus uh, u v prime all over v squared. Okay, so minus, so um, numerator being u, denominator being v. So again, uh, v u prime, but u prime is 0, minus u v prime, which could be negative dt all over v squared. Okay, so d inverse t should be equivalent to negative dt um, over t squared. Okay, so how does that let us change things up? So this becomes do, d log psat. Okay, well d inverse t is equivalent to negative dt over t squared. Okay which would be t squared um, d log psat dt, uh, and there's a negative sign. Okay, So all I did is bring the, the t up since it's um, dt over t squared. And that's going to be equal to negative delta h of vaporization over r. Okay, Negative signs cancel. Okay, So I have now that d log psat d 
dt is equal to delta h of vaporization over rt squared. Phew. Okay. So here's my alternative uh, clausius clapeyron equation to work with. Okay. Um, you know, and then all you need to do is is differentiate. So again, we have that um, d log p sat is equal to a2 minus b1 divided by t plus c. Okay, so all that would be left for you is so um, would be to you know differentiate this. Um, and I don't have a d here. Would be to differentiate this expression uh, with respect to t. Okay, so differentiate this with respect to t, um, which uh, is now straightforward. Um, and then, um, yeah, so then you'll have an expression for d log p sat dt. Um, are we given a temperature? Yeah, you're given 25 degrees C or 298.15 Kelvin. So um, you can work out an analytic expression for um, d log p sat dt. You can evaluate that using our constants a2, b1, and, uh, and I call this c0. You can plug in a uh, temperature of 298.15 Kelvin. So you can calculate a numerical value of that slope then um, at 25 degrees C. You multiply that by R, my molar gas constant. So if we're using SI units, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin um, times T squared times 298.15 um, Kelvin squared. And you've got delta H of vaporization in SI units. All right, so that would give you delta H of vaporization in units of joules per mole, uh, which you could then uh, convert to your desired units. But that's all there is to it. So all that's left is work out uh, an expression for the differential of log, um, you know, d log p sat dt, uh, giving uh, that equation below the box. And then once you have it, you can evaluate it at uh, 298.15 um, Kelvin. All right, uh, hope that helps.